Gemini, hello there my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for early October 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an oracle card here just so we could dip our toes in the energy and see what's going on for the lovely Gemini Collective. I hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic my friends. Let's get it going my guides. Talk to me. What do we got for lovely Gemini please? As we move into early October, Libra season, let's see what's happening. And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot, just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Gemini, please. And thank you. All right, so what do we got happening? Nice and quick. There it is. Beautiful. All right, so we're starting with a really good energy. Depending on what happens within this reading, this could be very good advice for some people because it's all about embracing creativity. I often see this with a lot of water sign and water sign energy, but this feels really good. A creation of some kind could really pay dividends. There's a lot of creativity here. Now, before we fully dive into a Gemini, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the subscriber, the October subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo into the reading. Let's talk about it. So on this card, we have this lovely lady with that interesting hairdo. She is in front of a sewing machine holding a golden thread and a rainbow is coming forth from this card. So it's all about really embracing the, those creative juices or creating your reality in one form or another. This is really good. Now, for a portion of you, if you've had a lot on your mind, if you've been thinking quite a bit, this is spirit asking you to like really get it out via creation of something, whether it's artistic, whether it's musical, whether it's writing, one form or another, just like bring something out of the etheric into the material world. Any creative pursuit or endeavor is highly favored in this time whether it's business or whether it's just for pleasure. This card to me can also link in with manifestation because that's what this lady is doing. She's creating something basically from nothing. So maybe for a lot of Geminis in this time, your powers of manifesting, your powers of creating are extra heightened. So keep that in mind, especially watch your mindset when we have this type of energy starting us off. But let's get into tarot. And yeah, I always say with that first card, it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a footnote for us. Let's get you three cards going in the upright. Then we'll get into the intuitive juiciness here. So let's shuffle it up one time for Gemini. And while we do, let's talk about last week's reading. It was pretty good energy. I do say so myself. Now, the last two weeks have been like the epitome of Gemini energy. Because two weeks ago, we had the energy of like karmic endings and cycles closing. But last week's reading was a surprising victory. So I hope you did have one, right? Victories, wins, they come in all different shapes and sizes, whether it's monetary, whether it's interpersonal, whether it's spiritual. So that energy could still bleed through in the coming days and weeks. So keep that in mind. Let's get you three cards though. Let's see what we have for Gemini. Gods and spirit team. Thank you. All right, so we are starting with a bang. We got the Fool card in position number one, big Aries energy. Love the Fool, especially at the beginning of a reading. That's a very comfortable place for Fool energy to be. Beginning of a journey, we like it. All about that action. Hermit, so, and, <laughs> I mean, it's the complete inverse of the Fool. So this is very start and stop, my friends. Okay, of two minds about something. I could really be it here. Let's get you one more, then we'll start to build this up. That really, I wasn't expecting that. Okay, somebody could be taking their time with something. We have temperance on the back end. We have all major arcana in this top portion. So let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes. Then we'll get into the juicy intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance, I already mentioned it. All of these cards are major arcana. Now, what do major arcana represent? Very powerful themes and archetypes that are possibly even life-changing sometimes. Very big themes. And we have fire, right? We have the fool, we have temperance. Those are of fire energy. But we also have earth grounding down the middle. So I'm getting a lot of stop, go, stop, go of two minds about things possibly. So we're really going to want to build out this story and see what's up. But let's take it piece by piece. Because remember, this could be one situation. It could be separate things. Position number one, we have the Fool card. Like I said, 
Aries energy, the initiator. So this is getting something moving, getting something going, about to start some sort of new journey. Um, there's a lot of positives to the Fool card. It is extremely action oriented, but there are some challenges that we link in with this as well. Sometimes the Fool energy could be a little spontaneous. Sometimes this Fool walks right off that cliff if it's not watching out, because there could be warnings with this card about anything spontaneous, which makes sense when we have the Fool and Temperance coming up after it, because it's like, all right, not so fast, slow it down when we're starting this fast and we move into these cards. So it's going to be intriguing to see how it plays out. Aside from the Aries connection with this card, it's jovial, it's happy, it's lighthearted. So we generally like this, but sometimes it could be somebody that isn't so trusting. I know that's like an odd energy we pick up with the Fool sometimes, but it's somebody that doesn't trust a process or doesn't trust a journey of some kind. But we'll see when we clarify. It could just be very positive. It could be us starting something quickly. Moving to the center, we have the complete inverse. Now, I must mention this as well. With these two cards, they are extremely spiritual when we have the Hermit and Temperance. The Hermit could be withdrawn from something. So in this time, there might be a situation, there might be a person, there might be something in general that you might be pulling back from when we have this Hermit card. This is a card of solitude. Now, the positives of the Hermit is that it represents wisdom, inner wisdom. There's a huge focus on spirituality with this card. There's a huge focus on self-improvement and the journey of the self. And that's something I could say about the Fool, too. It's like there's a lot of self-improvement with these first two cards. But this Hermit could be somebody purposely isolating. This could be somebody that's really pulled back, isolating on purpose. There could be big communication issues when we have a card like the Hermit. In its roughest sense, it could be somebody going through a dark time, like the Dark Night of the Soul or something like that. Virgo energy right here. Okay, so if you're connected to a Virgo, they're showing up right here in the center. I always say I take the cards at their optimistic meaning before we clarify, but I feel like there might be some sort of switch or a change happening here, whether it's within perspective or within situation. But moving to the back end here, we have Temperance. Beautiful. Sometimes this card, I don't want to say it gets a bad reputation, but sometimes people people could be frustrated by this energy. This is a card of patience. Now, it represents the zodiac sign of Sagittarius. When I see this, I always mention this as Archangel Michael on it. It is extremely spiritually protected. So for a lot of Geminis, you might just need to hear like you are protected. There is a beautiful light force on the other side watching out for you, guiding you. And it's really reassuring, especially when we have energy like the Hermit in the center. Like, to me, this is an energy of ancestors and protection. So I really love the Temperance card. However, this card does say, like, hey, slow it down, take your time, don't rush something. So it's the complete opposite of this fool. So we have this, like, needing for patience. We have this start, go, hot, cold. You might be of two minds about something for sure, or flip-flopping in your mind about something when we have all this type of energy up front, because they're all very powerful in their own right. Okay, these are extremely powerful energies. Um, a rough energy that we could see or a challenge that we see with temperance could be things that are way too delayed or things that are taking forever. You might feel like you're waiting too long on something, but this is also a card of alchemy, of change. Notice pouring the cups, the water, there's a creation aspect here as well. So I want to dive deeper on all this, Gemini. Let's jump in and clarify. All right, let's get a good shuffle here for Gemini. Let's see what's going on, my gods. And yes, my friends, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot, because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. What's going on that full card? Let's see what this action could be about. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Gemini, drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, Fool card. What's going on here? Why is the Fool here for Gemini in early October? The deck is being very specific now. For those of you that are new here, I do. I only read jumpers, so sometimes it takes a minute. But we have the Seven of Wands in reverse. Okay. I get the energy intuitively of somebody being extremely hard-headed about something like, no, I'm going to make this happen. Like one way or another, I'm going to make this happen. 
I'm going to take action towards this. Like they, I will not take no for an answer. I will not be stopped. Like, so this is an unstoppable type of energy I'm picking up here. Now, sometimes classically, the seven of wands could be representative of tests, of trials, of tribulation, sometimes being cornered or trapped. So maybe some of you are feeling liberated in this time. You might have something lifting off your shoulders, which would be good. But intuitively to me, it felt like this full energy is barreling through the seven of wands. So like overcoming something, if you're going through like tough situations or problems, this is somebody extremely motivated to get through it or get past it. Like I said, it's unstoppable. It's like, I'm not going to take no for an answer. Like, it doesn't matter what you put in front of me. So that could be very good. It could be challenging as well. All depends on what you're going through. I would say that's a good mind state, but we still have these cards of like, hold your horses, slow it down. So we need to see what's up, especially if I'm already getting vibes, vibes of a possible problem or a situation up here in the front. But yeah, this is someone who's not taking no for an answer or either that or somebody that's feeling free and liberated. Okay, take whichever one, but we're going to go in on that hermit. It's yeah, it's like, I will not accept defeat. I will not accept no for an answer, which, like I said, could be very polarizing. That could be very good, but it could also have some rough connotations. But let's see why that hermit is in the mix. Let's see what's up. I really want to get over to temperance as well. Why is the hermit here? Yeah, there's somebody waiting on the right moment for something. Okay. Different energy here in the center. We have the Six of Wands. Now, for a lot of you, you might be getting a lot of signs or gut feelings that, okay, any minute now, any day now, this is really going to swing my way. This is a very optimistic, positive feeling here. Um, the Six of Wands is my card of victory. It's my card of triumph. So I really, really do like this. But with this energy we have in the beginning, it's very conflicting. Once again, it's of two minds because in the front here, it's like action, action, action. I need to do something. I need to do something. Nothing's going to stop me. This one in the center is like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do nothing. And it's going to come to me like, all right, yeah, I don't have to do a damn thing. Like this, this result, this situation, this problem is going to resolve itself, which maybe spirit is trying to give you a little nudge about that. Like, listen, take it easy. Like everything will be okay. That could be something we're picking up here, but I like the energy in the center, believe it or not, even though yes, the hermit could represent blockages. Yes, it could represent problems. Maybe that's part of it as well. Like you get past one problem, there's another blockage here. But to me, this doesn't necessarily feel bad. It seems like another route to victory. Okay. So we could still be seeing wins and victories here. I think the the temperance card is really going to tell us the tale because like there's an, a little sub message here of like someone feeling like the deck is stacked against them. It's like, okay, I got past that. Now I have this to get to the victory. It's like, it's interesting. Let's go in on the temperance card and see what's up with that. We're not going to overcomplicate it. But yeah, once again, the two different minds here where one person's like, no, I need to do something. I need to do it now. And this other one's like, yeah, I don't need to do a damn thing. It's all going to flow for me. Let's see why the temperance card is in the mix. And then we'll do a quick recap before we get into the shadow card. So why is temperance here? Thank you. Arvin. Yeah, you need to stand firm about something, I believe. That's something that's showing up here. We have the Hierophant in the upright underneath temperance more major arcana here. The higher fin could represent the zodiac sign of Taurus. So we have a lot of zodiac signs popping up here. We got Aries, we got Virgo, we have Saggy, we have Taurus all showing up. Two earth, two fire. So you see what I mean? It's very action oriented, but also stop. But it's like stop, go, stop, go. Very split perspective that we're picking up here. But the higher fin, aside from the spiritual connotations, once again, with this card and temperance and the hermit, very, very spiritually tapped in type of energy. There could be something that spirit is asking you to really hold your ground with. Like, okay, like you need to really stick to what you say. Do what you mean, mean what you say type of energy. Like if you said it, do it. If you committed yourself to something, make sure it happens one way or another. That's a vibe I'm picking up here. And there could be something you really need to like refrain from. 
as well. Aside from sticking to your guns, aside from like really staying set in a plan, there's something that you might need to like, oh, refrain from this for a moment. That's just the vibe I'm picking up because these are very still energies right here on the back end. So maybe there is something that you need to stop or shut down for whatever reason. I'm not getting bad energies here though, Gemini. Let's go through and do a quick recap because we do have victory and we have possible different routes to it, but Spirit might be asking you to take the slower route or like not really stir the pot. Let's go through one by one. Position number one, we have the Fool with the Seven of Wands in reverse. Like I said, intuitively to me, that did feel like somebody plowing through things. Like I will not accept no for an answer. I need to do something. I need to act now. I'm going to make it happen. Nothing's going to stop me. But there was this little problematic energy I was picking up as well. It's like when you get through one thing, then there's another. However, we get to the center. We have the Hermit with the Six of Wands in the upright, where this one's all about action. This one is like, I'll wait until it comes to me type of energy. So do with that what you will. There is still the energy of wins. There's still the energy of victory. So you see what I mean of it's very um, of two minds because we have, we have problems, but we also have wins and victories here. On the back end, we have temperance with the hierophant in the upright. To me, this did feel like you really need to stick to your guns about something or hold your ground. If you said you're going to do something, you need to do it. If you committed yourself to something, you need to see it through. That's the main vibe I was picking up back here. But there is so much spirituality in the mix as well, Gemini. Please take a screenshot, look into this further, because there's a lot of extra meaning here. So it's a mixed bag this week, right? It's one of those readings where we have a bit of a mixed bag. Let's see what's in the shadows for you. What's in the shadows for Gemini, please? Gods and spirit team. And yes, I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end. I feel like it's a nice introspective thing to do, whether it's something within yourself or something you don't quite see. It's not always a bad thing. Let's get you a shadow card. And yes, if you've made it this far in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link down in the comments. I'll be doing a personal spread for each member for this first month. So it's a couple more weeks to sign up for that, but let's get you a shadow card, no pressure. Okay, that popped up super, super quick. Okay, we have the Eight of Cups. Hmm, someone possibly walking away from something begrudgingly. Um, this, in its roughest sense, could be someone feeling like they've been left behind or abandoned in some sort of way. But the Eight of Cups isn't always a, a rough and tough type of energy. Now, sure, for some of you, there could be certain things happening that really bring these sorts of feelings to the surface, like feeling like you've got left behind or abandoned in some sort of way. But when I see the Eight of Cups, if it's not walking away from something begrudgingly, this is a card about continuing on your journey, okay? Not getting hung up in certain results, not letting anything stop you, but continuing on your journey to happiness. Because what comes after the Eight of Cups? It's the Nine of Cups. It's the Ten of Cups. These are like even more energies of wish fulfillment, better things yet to come. So for a lot of Geminis, this could really be spirit saying, listen, continue on your journey. The best is yet to come. And that's a beautiful thing. So Gemini, that's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details of the October subscriber surprise. If you got your name in for the September subscriber surprise, the winners will be announced after this week's fire and air readings. But for October, I'll be going back to one of the classics. I'll be giving away two copies of the Everyday Witches Tarot. It's one of the most beautiful decks out there. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things as always, my friends. First, you must be subscribed. Second, let me know down in the comments if there's a zodiac sign that you clash with. If so, which signs do you kind of bump heads with? You'll be entered to win, and at the end of October, your name will be announced in the community tab, my friends. As always, much love, and I'll see you next time.